Watch out, watch out, watch out! Sponsoring today's video, we have VIP GVG Mall, an official platform selling games for several PC launchers, consoles and of course Microsoft serial keys like The Office 2019 or the most common Windows 10 Pro, where you can use my SKG discount code and enjoy 20% off, making it only $14. After getting the key, you'll have the key in your profile and all you need to do is go to your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, I'm Shinkin Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome <coughs> and welcome to my channel. So in today's video we're actually going to do uh, an, a new over overclocking tutorial, in this case an overclocking and undervolting tutorial, but in this case for the RX 6600 non-XT, okay? I have one for the XT and now we're gonna have another but for the non-XT version. Now. Common questions that we have to bring first. Does the brand of your GPU matter? No. It doesn't matter the branding of your GPU. Doesn't matter if it is from Asus, from ASRock, from Powercaller, Sapphire, uh, if it is the, an actual AMD version, it doesn't matter, okay? This tutorial serves for all brands. And when I say all brands, I mean literally all brands because inside the chip is the same. The cooler may be different, the PCB may be a little different, but the card is the same, okay? Independently from the, um, the aftermarket cooler it has. Second question, will this somehow destroy or damage your GPU? No. And no, because we're basically not pushing over the voltage limits, okay? Although this is an overclocking, it is also an undervolting tutorial. Although in this case we won't undervolt much, but basically we just won't push more voltage than the stock one. If we don't push more voltage than the stock, it means that the stock voltage is the same, we will just raise the frequency and blah blah blah. And usually you can also undervolt, so decrease the voltage comparing to the stock one. And if you do that, you'll most likely have a bigger lifespan of your GPU instead of having a, uh, a lower one. So if we're not messing around with higher voltages, we are good to go and no, it won't damage your GPU. So now that you know this, we can actually go to the overclocking tutorial. For this, I will be using the AMD Radeon Wattman, the AMD Radeon settings per se. So you can also use the MS Afterburner, but I mean, you have the Radeon settings, use the MS Afterburner only if you do not have the Radeon settings because you can install the driver only, okay? So right click on your desktop and if you are on Windows 11 you have this menu, if you are on Windows 10 you have the AMD Radeon settings right here. So we're going for show more options so we can actually have the Windows 10 settings, basically the Windows 10 menu and it is here, AMD Radeon software. Then you have several tabs here, but the only one that you want to go is the performance tab. Click on it, then go to the tuning tab. By the way, if you have the metrics here and you do not use the metrics because, for example, you're using MS Afterburner for that, just disable all of them, okay? Makes no sense having the metrics enabled if you're using them, um, if you're using the metrics from MS Afterburner and Riva Turner Statistics Server, okay? Basically, performance, tuning, and now we have the settings. So the first thing that we actually have to do is put the, um, the settings to manual, all of them. So first you go to manual tuning and custom, okay? This unlocks all the other menus. Then you keep unlocking menus till there are no more to unlock. So GPU tuning, advanced controls, VRAM tuning, advanced controls, power tuning, now fan tuning, and yes, this is more than enough for now, okay? Press apply. Now we have our base, okay? After having our base, the first thing that you actually need to do after this is the power tuning. So you just go and raise the power tuning to the max you have. Depending on your model, so maybe if you have a, a higher end model, your power limit may be like 50%. If you have a lower end model like mine, uh, like the power color of mine that you can see in this video, 
you'll have like 20% or maybe even less, like 15% or 10%. It really depends on your model, okay? On the bias of your model. This option alone won't make the card automatically consume more. It will make the card consume a bit more if it needs more power to perform better. So if the card is already performing at its max in that, um, in that amount of power, of power draw, this will make nothing. But basically, yeah, just raise it to the max because it will perform better in some scenarios, okay? This is the first thing that you have to do. The second thing is the core, the GPU tuning. Let's go to the core. As for a matter of performing well, of good performance, I like to keep the GPU minimum frequency and max frequency um, with only 100 megahertz from each other, okay? For example, if we have 2600 here, then the minimum will be 2500, okay? This will avoid several things like frequency jumping all over the place when you have, when you're playing, for example, CSGO. The card will lay down the frequency because, well, because it's a, a CPU intensive title, so the card will be like sleeping and it will decrease the frequency. Although decreasing the frequency may also decrease the FPS a little. So by doing this, by setting the minimum frequency just 100 MHz apart from the maximum frequency, it will maintain the FPS higher. The same applies to Valorant and other games, so the frequency will stay high, it will stay high, sorry, instead of bouncing all over the place depending on the GPU load, okay? From my testing with this GPU, with this particular GPU, don't forget that all GPUs are different. If you have the same exact GPU as I have, it will most likely have a different binning, so the max frequency and the max voltage, or in this case the max frequency and the minimum voltage will be different. It's like lottery. Some GPUs come better, some GPUs come worse. It's the same for RAM, it's the same for CPUs and so on. From my own testings, all you need to do is go here and put 2600 and for the max 2700. Since this card doesn't, uh, doesn't eat that much power, doesn't pull that much power, like I said, 100 to 120 watts, it was like pulling 120 watts in control, which is a really, really heavy game, okay? Uh, so, it is nothing, 120 watts. So, since it doesn't pull that much power, what we actually want is to, um, to get the max performance that we can. If the card was consuming a lot, then we would undervolt. In this case, we do not need. As for my card, I can undervolt only a bit, only to 1130 at this frequency. I can raise the frequency about 100, 150 megahertz, and I can actually decrease 20 millivolts, so from 1150 to 1130, okay? So this is the first step that you have to do, then you hit apply, of course, then you go and test it in a game, okay? You can also use the stress test included, but... I wouldn't, I wouldn't really advise it. Testing some ha really heavy games like Control, for example. Um, I have some more here, like for example, Cyberpunk, like, uh, let's say, Red Dead Redemption, like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Yeah, tested in some really heavy games for, let's say, 10 minutes. If it is okay, then you go here once again and decrease the voltage a bit more, 1120. Then you hit Apply. Bam, okay? Then do the same thing. If it is stable for let's say 10 or 15 more minutes with these exact settings without the FPS being locked, of course, so let the card push the max FPS possible, then go here once again, 11, 10. If it is stable, decrease once again, 1100, and so on, so on, so on, till you reach the minimum voltage for this exact frequency of 2600 minimum and 2700 maximum, okay? In my case, it's 1130 millivolts. Now, after you're certain that the core overclocking is actually stable, then you can go to the VRAM tuning. So do not go into the... V <laughs> do not go into the VRAM tuning if you're not certain of the stability of the core overclock, okay? So do this, test it properly, use the inbuilt test, uh, use 3D Mark if you want. Um, use heavy games, like I said. And once you are sure it is stable, go to the VRAM tuning, okay? 
Now, the VRAM tuning is one of the different things from the 6600 XT. The 6600 XT could easily make like 2700, 2800. This one can do a max of 2600, 2700, because after the 2700, not even the max voltage is enough, at least for my card. So if I go here and put 1150, but I go to 2700, then 2800, the card will just crash, not even with a max voltage. It's the wall of this card, okay? Like I said before, the, the VRAM tuning is the big difference. While the 6600 XT can go to 2200 MHz, the maximum VRAM of this model of the non-XT is 1100, okay? It's 300 MHz less, which is actually a lot. Both GDDR6, but like I said before, this, these cards are the low binnings, uh, are the low bins, so basically the chips there aren't good enough to go into a 6600 XT go to this card, the, the non-XT version, okay? So that's why we have a maximum of, of 1900, okay? As for the 6600 XT, I can do, for example, 2200 MHz with fast timings and in this card it is almost impossible to get the fast timing stable, okay? So if you want the max performance, just leave it on default and raise the frequency to the max. If you want a stable value, I would I would most likely say that 1840 is a stable value and maybe 1880 will work for most people, okay? This value will work for most people and for some 1900, okay? But once you go for the for the fast timings, you will need like you will need to decrease to like 1800 to be able to use the fast timings and it will be faster to use 1900 with default faster and more stable than use for example 1800 with fast timings okay so default and 1900 you can you can mess around a bit here but you will have you'll most likely have some crashes the system will reboot you'll have some crashes so don't get too worried about it just we start the computer and try again, okay? But basically that's it, 1900, default, and yeah, as for the fan tuning, my card is pretty is pretty cold, but I do not like to have the zero RPM because of this. As you can see, the card was idling at 55 degrees, and for me, that's too much. So I remove the zero RPM, and I want the card to be at least at, let's say, 40, 30s, 40s at max. I aim always for the 30s at idle. The maximum VRAM frequency also. The VRAM frequency is this high because I'm recording. Once I stop recording, the VRAM tuning, the, the frequency will decrease for like, will decrease to like 10 megahertz, 20 megahertz. This is how it works. Once you go into the game, it will ramp up once again. But if you're idle in your desktop, it will be like 20, 30 megahertz, more or less like that. So. Don't worry if your values don't appear right away, okay? You need to go into a game for the values to apply. The same goes for the clock speed. As you can see here, the, the GPU core, it's exactly the same. It will stay low while you are in desktop or doing just light loads. Once you are gaming, it will increase. So the minimum frequency here isn't actually for all scenarios. It is basically for 3D applications. So once you're gaming or doing heavy stuff, the minimum frequency will be this one, not in simple things, okay? So don't worry about having the, a minimum frequency of 2600 MHz all the time because it won't happen. It's not how it works, okay? And yeah, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. <coughs> like always, if you have any doubts, leave them in the comment section and I will answer as fast as possible. And also, you have the link in the description with my profiles, with my profiles for this, uh, for this card. So, if you want to try my profiles, just go to the link, download, and then you go here to the load profile, select the location of your profile, and load it. Just take in consideration that my profile may not work completely for your card, and you may have to tune it a little uh, here and there, because all cards are different, like I said, 300 times. You may have to tune my profile, my profile may not work for your GPU and you may need more voltage or you may, al may also need less voltage. You may need to decrease the frequency a bit or you may even, 
you may even be able to use the fast timings. All cards are different, okay? Now, seriously, guys, let's stop this huge video. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. Ciao. Hidden behind that poster that leads to the real world. We all feel safe in that room. But sometimes, sometimes something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. I'm here. Why did you bring me here? Hello? Anyone here?